Hi, welcome to Electrobuff. Today in this episode I'll show you how you can make a simple 12 volts 5 ampere self-switching frame back power supply for your DIY or hobby projects. The complete circuit schematics are shown here. So at the input you need about 100 to 240 volts AC. There's a current limiting fuse and this filter made up of this capacitor, this common mode deductor joke. So then it's followed by a full bridge rectifier to convert the AC into DC. A thermistor is also put in place right before the bulk capacitor to limit the initial rush current when the capacitor is charging as it can cause the fuse to easily blow. Then the, there's the main switching section made up of this MOSFET, the IRF 840. It can handle 500 volts and a current of up to 8 amperes. If you want more power from this, I recommend you use a um, larger package like the IRF T450 or the 460s, they work fine. So this is a snubber network. So initially, the gate of the MOSFET will be biased by this resistor, the first 20 kilohms, and it will begin conducting. So this will cause current to flow through the primary winding through the MOSFET into ground. There's a current sensing resistor such that when about 0.7 volts develops at this node, this transistor will conduct and it will connect the gate of the MOSFET to the ground, thereby turning off the MOSFETs. This acts as a current limitation on the primary sign. So when the MOSFET turns off, all the magnetic energy stored in the core of the transformer will be transferred to the secondary sign where it is rectified by this high frequency short key diode and filtered by this capacitor. This is a small minimum rod which is recommended for switching mode pass supplies to ensure that they operate as expected. Otherwise, the voltage across this capacitor will just continue to increase. So there is a small auxiliary winding and a rectification and filtering network here such that there will be a small positive voltage at this node. So, and also the MOSFET will be in conducting as long as this capacitor is charged. So, current sensing on the secondary is done by this Zener diode. It's written for 11 volts and that combined by the voltage drop across this internal LED of the optocoupler to ensure that when the voltage is about 12 in 3 volts, the Zener diode will be in conducting and the internal infrared LED will light up since current will find it's way from the positive rail to the negative rail of the secondary sign. So this will turn on the output transistor of the optocoupler and it will connect a positive voltage from the auxiliary winding to the base of this feedback transistor which will shunt the gate of the MOSFET to ground again. So this serves as a current regulation on the secondary sign. The optocoupler you can even use the PC817 or any other optocoupler you have lying around. So there is also a zener diode across the gate and the negative rail of the MOSFET which should be written at least 12 to 18 volts depending on the MOSFET you are using since any voltage above that can easily damage the MOSFET. So when winding the transformer you should make 15 turns of the primary winding using about 0.4 mm NML copper wire then make the 5 turns for the secondary winding and between, in between that you should put like 5 layers of insulation tape then after the secondary winding you put around 5 layers of insulation tape then make the 3 layers of the auxiliary winding then put like 3 layers of insulation tape and then make the remaining 15 turns of the primary winding this will ensure that the secondary and auxiliary windings are nicely sandwiched between the entire primary winding to improve coupling and the transfer coefficient the power transformer ensures that it has a core of at least 1.25 cm squared to handle 60 watts. If you want one to handle like 120 watts, just use a larger core. You can obtain such pass transformers from old computer ATX power supplies or any other switch mode power supplies lying around. Ensure that it has a ferrite core. You can also use a Toronto ferrite if you have one right around. Ensure that it, just ensure that it's large enough. So that's all about this simple impulse power supply. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel for more amazing projects and tutorials. And I'll see you in the next episode. Have a nice time.